Today is Saturday, March 14th, 2015, and this is the Bunny Slippers of Evil Job Seekers Calling Show, presented by Evil Bunny Consulting. I'm your host, Tyrone Griffin, and if it's 3 p.m. you have on your bunny slippers, you are not looking for a job. Welcome, first time returning listeners. In this show, we discuss strategies and tactics of job search, staying motivated and dealing with career transition. For more tips, resources, and daily motivations, go to the website bunnyslippersareevil.com. There you will also find links to our Facebook page and Twitter handle. If you are listening live, you can call in with your questions at 347-202-0929. Again, that number is 347-202-0929. And now a word from our sponsors. Evil Bunny Consulting is the, ex- the alternative to expensive outplacement. It gives company-sponsored excuse me, company-sponsored job seeker workshops as well as the one-on-one job seeker boot camp with a money-back guarantee. For more information, go to www.bunnyslippersareval.com. Resume Edit is the low-cost, high-quality resume writing company with resumes as low as $35 written by certified resume writers. You can find them online at www.resume4edit.com or call 404-860-2473 and be sure to tell them you heard about them on the Bunny Slippers Are Evil Job Seekers Podcast. Let 3DResumes.net turn your resume into a web page with a customized domain for 12 months for only $30. Help hiring managers and recruiters find you, make your resume available 24-7, and get a professional, personalized email address just for your job search. You can see my online resume at TyroneGriffin.com, and for more information on how to get your own, go to 3DResumes.net. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode. A um, few little housekeeping things I got to do this week. Uh, for those of you that are watching the uh, or listening, sorry, to the audio version, uh, there should be a link in the show notes to the video version of this podcast. Yeah, we're doing busy video now. Been doing it for about three or four weeks, and I'm still working some of the bugs out, but it's coming along pretty well. Um, and second, this week I started something new. It's called One Minute Bunny Tips. Now I don't know how often I'll put them up. I won't try to do it every day. Uh, because it's just too much, believe it or not, it takes a long time to film a minute. But uh, there's about two or three of them up now, and I'll just add them over time. And basically, they are just little snippets of one minute of a topic. So something that I might cover on an, on a show over 30 minutes, I'll try to give you this, the, the basics, the, 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 the down and dirty, raw, here's what it is in a minute. And there's a little, a little timer on the, on the screen, too, so you keep me to a minute. But it's for, for people who are, if you know, maybe you're about to go into a resume, into an interview or you're, you need a quick, quick question answer. Instead of listening to a whole show, you might be able to listen to one minute bunny tips. So uh, we'll be updating the website soon and I'll have links to them. But you can also go to our YouTube channel. If you go to uh, Bunny Tips or Evil, sorry, YouTube channel, you'll be able to see um, the bunny tips. You'll be able to see these uh, video podcasts as well. So and the videos will also have links to the audio podcast. So for those of you who are not watching, uh, who are listening to this, I encourage you to go watch the video portion. Uh, I'm dressed up this week, and uh, there's a reason for that. There's a couple of reasons for it, actually. One is because this week's show, the topic of this week is it's all about the swagger. Now, let me get into this. First, when people think about swagger, they think about arrogance. And yeah, that is a valid uh, definition for that it is valid for people to think oh okay he's an he's an arrogant so-and-so or she's an arrogant so-and-so because they got the swagger the swagger is about confidence and 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 for those of you in the video you're going to see me look at my notes a lot so because i i did write notes but you know swagger it starts with self-confidence that's where it starts okay you see people and that's why and for the audio people, you will have no idea what I'm talking about. For the videos, this is why I'm wearing this. This is swagger. This is, and, and why is it swagger? Because nobody does it. How often do you see somebody wearing one of these at work? And I'm not talking about the clip-ons. I'm talking about they tied it themselves. How often do we see that? We don't see that very often. That's swagger. Call it old, you know, I wore it one day and somebody said, oh, you look like the the old professor. It's like, yeah, the old professor with swagger. That's what I look like. But anyway, um, 
let's talk about swagger. Why should you have swagger? Because swagger starts from a, a point, a perspective of being confident. And in your transition, you know, we talked about it last week, a couple of weeks ago about, you know, how do you, we did a job search Q&A and we talked about how do you come back from, you know, if you feel like you are responsible for your layoff, uh, how do you come back from that mentally? How do you get yourself geared up? And how do you get your confidence back? And part of getting your confidence back is getting your swagger back. Yeah, swagger can be a good thing. Um, but swagger does a couple of things. Having a little swagger, it helps you ch shake things up. Like I said, I wore this one day uh, to work. Uh, and I was in a casual work environment where we don't have to you know, wear ties every day. But I wore mine. I did this. And it, it shakes things up. And that's what you want to do. One thing you realize, you might realize in your career, you know, maybe you were in a job for 10 or 12 years, you were doing it well, but you maybe you weren't getting promoted. You know, you weren't moving forward as, as fast as maybe you wanted to. Um, shake things up. Not just to, to I'm not talking about come in wearing a, a, a hula hoop or anything, you know, but I'm saying for your own good, you don't want to get Excuse me. You don't want to get complacent. That's the hard thing. You never want to get complacent in your job, in your career, in your relationships. I've often said that job search is a lot like dating and career management is a lot like um, being married or being in a long term relationship. Every now and then you have to shake things up because things can get stale. Um, you can come in every day. You're doing the same job. And it, it, it gets stale. You just, you start acting like a robot. You start, you're on autopilot. You know, think about that. You're just doing it. You, you, every day you just come in, you do your job. You stop thinking about it. You stop thinking about your career like that. You know, that's when things happen. And that's when all of a sudden you find yourself in transition or, you know, they're doing layoffs and you realize that a lot of the people you maybe came into the company with 10 or years ago or whatever, they moved on to better opportunities. And you've been doing the same job, not because you weren't qualified to move on, but because you never shook things up, because you never shook yourself up. Sometimes it takes, it's not just shaking up uh, the company, it's shaking up yourself. It's getting, it's, it's recognizing that you are in a rut, that you are, in, 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 even with a relationship. That's why, you know, you see people do a lot of date nights now. You know, you, you know 15, 20 years ago, we never heard of date nights. But now you get people that are, you know, they'll go on a date night with their spouse or their long term partner. Just a way of shaking things up, adding a little excitement. Again, you got to be very careful at work when you want to add excitement because, you, you know, you don't want to come in with a lampshade on your head and say, I'm adding excitement. because That's a, that's not a good thing. No. Um, yeah, that's not good. So. Um, so one thing you want to do is just it's, it's a way of shaking things up. And, you know, you keep, like I said, you keep yourself from getting complacent. Um, I think about, I did a show a couple of months back uh, called Dress for Your, I think it was called Dress for Your Execution. And the, it, it, it was, the, the thing that made me think about doing that show was thinking about how people who are going to their death, how they face death. Um, some people will face death. Uh, they'll curl up in a corner, curl up into a ball and cry. Uh, but you think about, and I, and I remember bringing this up on that particular episode, the uh, musicians on the deck of the Titanic, what did they do? They went and put on their finest clothes and they stood out on that deck and they played. They played as hard and as well as they could. And they basically said, if, if, if death is coming for me today, I'm going to be well dressed. I've actually done that on a job where uh, my, uh, a contract was ending, the last day of work. I dressed up, you know, I dressed, you know, you can say I would dress for my execution. You think about when people are on death row, they um, give you that last meal or whatever, you know, if you have to face it, face it with style, face it with your head held high. Um, the, that scene from uh, Star Trek, the Wrath of Khan, the original Wrath of Khan, not this thing they did a couple of years ago, when Spock is in the... Um, nuclear reactor days and he's all jacked up and he gets up and what's the first thing he does he straightens his uniform 
you know, it's like have that. I mean, that was swagger. You know, you all burnt up in the face and you just put it back together. You know, walk out, you know, um, there's old, I remember seeing an old comedian or somebody in some, some skit where they got uh, kicked out of a restaurant for, for, you know, credit card declined or something, whatever. And they stood up and they marched up with their heads held high. That's the thing I always, always wonder when people uh, get caught doing something and they, head, they hold their head down in shame. It's like, why? What you did, you did. It wasn't a mistake. You knew what you were doing. You knew the whole time you were doing it that this is not good, but it's going to be good for me. So you did it. But then, you know, when you get caught, it's like, I'm so ashamed. Why? Why are you ashamed because you got caught? Had you not got caught, you wouldn't feel any shame. Anyway, that was the first rat hole of the episode, and I'm so sorry. Uh, let me get back to what I was talking about. Again, dress for your execution. That's swagger. Uh, you stand out from a crowd. In transition and in life, the thing that you want to do is stand out. You want to, uh, you know, you don't want to look like everybody else. I remember when I worked for a large insurance company early in my career, and they had a what they call group school, where they would come in and they would train the salespeople who would sell their products. And if you saw the pictures, I remember we could see the uh, pictures of the uh, graduating class is going back to like the 1920s and it was funny how they looked everybody looked the same they were the same height they were the same race usually uh same short haircut all the guys looked exactly alike and it was like everybody had on their their nice gray suit and their blue shirt and you know um so they they did that and uh, everybody looked the same. Uh, you don't get ahead in your career, in my opinion. Uh, oh, no, let me let me rephrase that. You might, but do you really want to be plucked randomly? <clears throat> do you really want to not have your own style persona? You know, you could play it safe. You may not get anywhere. It's the idea that. Some people, and I remember having this conversation with somebody about it, I'd rather be, what is this term? How did I say it? And I thought about people that have been in jail for a long time and, and, and still claim their innocence. I said, I'd rather be jailed for the truth than freed for a lie. That is why you have to think of your career. I'd rather be, I'd rather be myself and maybe not be as successful, but I'll have my integrity, I'll have my myself, than to be somebody you want me to be, and I'm not. Okay, I'm a six foot four man talking about bunny slippers, okay? This is me. <laughs> um, anyway, again, half a rat hole on that one. Um, you know, I remember when I was when I was in uh in school way back in the last millennia, I know it sounds like a long time ago, and it it was the first first day or first couple of weeks of school was like a fashion show <clears throat> you know you got all your new school clothes and 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 you uh you know the first three or four days and i remember people had all kinds of strategies you know if school started on thursday some people wear their new clothes thursday and friday some people will wait till monday so they looked like they had more new clothes um but remember what we used to do was we try our clothes on you know you get your clothes, you get all your, your, your school clothes ready, and like, you know, two days before school, you're in your room trying your clothes on, looking in the mirror, you know, getting your swagger on, and you know, yeah, I'm gonna look fly in this, and you know, we did all of that. Um, practicing our swagger. That's what you need to do. Practice your swagger, you know. Um, again, swagger starts the basic, the basic building block of swagger is confidence you have to have confidence in yourself if you don't have confidence swagger looks stupid trust me you see people try to have swagger and they're they're not there and it's like wow really but um but i was saying swagger it is a mental thing that manifests itself in your physical demeanor swagger 
is how you carry yourself with swagger. Uh, you see professional athletes all the time, you know, they have that swagger. Um, what's funny is they have swagger when they win. And when they mess up or, you know, if they don't win, their head held up, I've let my team down. Where's that swagger? You know, if you go through life just doing your best at everything you do, regardless of how it works out, then your confidence should always be there. See, we tend to look at the outcomes. And that's one thing we do in, in our society in general. Um, one of my old pet peeves is two people can go out and shoot somebody. And one person's got really great aim and they pop them in the head. I know this is graphic and I apologize. And the other person just has bad aim and they shoot and hit the person in the foot. The person with the better aim goes to jail for life. The one with the bad aim maybe does two years. They both have the same intentions, but because of the outcome, their, their sentences change. Um, just do your best, period. The outcome is going to be what it's going to be. You just do your best at everything you can do, and you'll keep your confidence. If you keep your confidence, you'll keep your swagger. And swagger is something that you can have in your head. It is a, it, it can manifest itself in things like this. It can manifest itself in how you maybe shine your shoes, um, how you walk with your back a little straighter when you go into work. Uh, you don't got to come in with your with your hat tipped to the side like Billy D back in the day or, you know, walking stick or, you know, a little dip to your step. You don't have to do all of that. But in your head, you can have your swagger and your swagger. If that's what it takes for you to sit upright, to walk proud, then that's what you do. Because in life, you should walk proud into everything you do. Yeah. Sorry. But again, you know, swagger is not just about how you dress. Swagger is a way of carrying yourself. Swagger is a way of being who you are. There are some people who, you, know, you remember in high school there were, or even college, there were some people who just had it. They walked in the room, didn't say a word, walked in the classroom, and it was like, wow, that person's got confidence. That person has swagger, you know male or female it could be and they instantly had followers because they acted like a leader they acted like they had swagger that's what you need to be doing that's how you need to to carry yourself with your swagger you have to have that you know as i was saying you have to have that mental swagger because it's in your head it's not nobody can give you swagger Nobody can, uh, you know, smack it into you. But swagger is that confidence you have about who you are. <clears throat> Excuse me. About who you are. About what your value is. And sometimes, you know, particularly in transition, job transition, it is very hard to have swagger. Even if you had it because you think, oh, I was so arrogant, I got fired for being arrogant. Well, that's when you got that crazy swagger, that, that outward swagger. But if you have it in your head, if you keep your swagger to yourself and you use it to, you know, think about if you're working on projects and you're afraid, you mess up a project and you're afraid that every project after that, you're probably going to mess it up. You know, get that swagger back saying, no, you know what? I'm worthy. I'm good. I know what I'm doing. And just approach it like that that I know what I'm doing. I'm confident. I have that mental, that self swagger, you know, in my, in, at my desk, I'm probably sitting there just typing away in my head. I'm the man, you know, let me tell you something for everybody who does not see in the, the video version of this, you're missing a great show, but that's just me. Um, but really, uh, your swagger is about your self-confidence. It's about feeling confident. Even, again, the people on the deck of the Titanic got dressed in their finest clothes and played their way out. Okay? Think about that. Think about how many, you know, 
people have been going to their execution and they put on their finest suit, you know, and they walk proudly. You know, if they were getting, back when they used to hang people, I'm not talking lynching, I'm talking, you know, where they hung people, court of law, all that. And they walked up proudly, put their head in the noose, said, bring it on. You know, who was it, that movie Sin City with, um, I forgot the guy's name. He was in Nine and a Half Weeks a long time ago, and he looks like he's, he played the wrestler. But anyway, uh, in, the, in the movie, he was uh, convicted of a crime, and he was um, being electrocuted. That was, that was his, uh, his death sentence. So he's got in a chair, and he sat there. And, you know, he basically was like, hey, I ain't got all day. Y'all hurry this up. That's swagger. You can either meet your maker or you can meet your, your doom, as you would call it, curled up in a corner crying, or you can stand proud. Everything you do in life, you need to stand proud. As I was talking about earlier, where people get caught doing something, they start hanging their head in shame. Are you hanging your head in shame? You did it. If you're not proud of doing it, then don't do it. If it's not something that you can be proud of, then don't do it. Period. End of story. Just don't do it. But if you do it, have the, 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 the guts to stand there. I won't say be a man because you could be a woman. You did it. If you're going back to the dating thing, if you're cheating on your spouse, you get caught. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Be proud. You did it. Everything in life you do. I have a friend. And, and they always say, you know, I just try to do my best at everything I do. And um, I admire that because uh, this person really does do that. Everything they do, they just try to do their best at. And they are never, they're never ashamed of anything because they only do things that they intend to do. But also, they always try to do their best, period. So... We got about seven minutes left and I got about eight bullets. <laughs> Swagger is an art, not a science. I can't tell you, I can't show you how to have swagger because my swagger and your swagger may be different. So it's an art. Like most things in life, it's an art. You have to develop it yourself and make it personal. It's yours. Remember, it is confidence not arrogance there's a fine line between confidence and arrogance you know when you crossed it when you get on people's nerves no seriously you'll know when you're confident versus arrogant confidence means you believe in your abilities your abilities arrogance means you think you're better than everybody else remember this people no matter how rich you are how successful you are your gifts come from God or your parents, whatever you want to believe in. And yeah, maybe you did work hard and you got four different PhDs and three master's degrees and, you know, good for you. And you're very successful. I'm happy for you. But don't let that swagger that, that become arrogance. And we all know arrogant people. We've seen them, you know, and they know who they are. And the funny thing is they put their pants or dress on the same way the rest of us do. And when they die, they're not taking none of it with them. That's, you know, the great equalizer, you know, you're, you're, and they're remembered for being jerks. You know, um, don't like the name drop. I'm not going to name drop. Well, Joan Rivers. Um, when she was uh, you know, early in her career, you know, I remember her and I thought she was, you know, very funny funny person. Um, thought she was beautiful actually before all that plastic surgery stuff. But um, as she got later in her career, she got very mean in my opinion. I stopped watching her because her whole shtick was um, who can I insult today? And um, got old. I didn't like it. And you know, when she passed away, there was a lot of split in her supporters and the people that said she was, she was mean. You know, when you leave, do you want people to say you were mean? Why be mean? You know, have confidence in yourself. Have your swagger about your confidence and your abilities. 
But don't have arrogance. Don't be arrogant. Don't don't walk around like, you know, you can walk around like, hey, I'm here. But you don't have to walk around like, I'm here and I'm better than all of y'all. Don't do that. See, that's the, 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 the fine line of confidence and arrogance. And, and swagger, you might think, oh, it's over in the arrogance line. It doesn't have to be. You can have swagger about just your abilities, your confidence in yourself. Um, my mother used to say something. You know, and this is the thing about when you're in transition and you are trying to, uh, here's, what, here's a, I'm not even going to mess with it, I'm just going to say it. My mother used to have this uh, uh, saying called, if you can't dazzle them with brilliance, you baffle them with BS. And yeah, that's what life is about. If you can't dazzle them with brilliance, you baffle them. That's what, that's what swagger is. You get up in a situation where you have to present on stage and you're presenting to a group of audience of maybe two or three or four hundred people. You only have to know a little more than your audience. But anyway, I've jumped around a lot and I apologize. Um, but the bottom line is. Swagger is a, it can be a very it's, it's like a knife and it's like a bat. A knife can be used to make a beautiful dish or a knife can be used to cut it can be used for good or it can be used for bad a bat can be used to hit a home run which is good a bat can be used to assault somebody which is bad okay but swagger can be a positive or a negative depending on how you use it that's what it comes down to how you use your swagger do you use it to be a good person do you use it to have confidence in yourself, to keep yourself going, to shake things up within yourself so that you don't get complacent? Is that why you use your swagger? Or do you use your swagger to beat other people over the head and, and make them think that you feel that they're worse than you, that they're not as good a people as you? You know, because you have a hundred thousand dollar car, you know. Oh, you got good credit. Okay. Or you got decent credit because right now they'll give you, you know, you, you probably get a car with bad credit. But do you use that to, to, to beat other people over the head to make them know that, hey, I think I'm better than you. Is that what you do with your, with your swagger? Is that how you use your swagger? That's not how you should use it. Use it to, to build your own self-confidence up. When those times when you're looking for jobs and you're not getting the callbacks and things like that from people, and you're starting to, everything's starting to, 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 to close in on you. Get your swagger back. I am somebody. Okay. Get your swagger back. And get it back for yourself. Not for anybody else. Just for yourself. Okay. That's what this show was about this week. I know I jumped around a lot and I'm sorry. But at the end of the day, the bottom line is this. Get your swagger back for yourself, to build your confidence in who you are and what your abilities are. That's the reason you should have swagger. We got about 90 seconds to go. And for those watching the video, uh, you're seeing me do something here. And I'm not going to say what it is. People on the video can see it. But if you want to know, check out the video version of this podcast. Because this show is all about swagger. This show is all about having that swagger. But we got 60 seconds. Let me just thank everybody. Um, let me do my cl show closing first. Thanks for listening. If you are listening on the website, feel free to subscribe in iTunes. And if you like the show, please leave feedback so others can find the show. And I truly appreciate it. If you have a free job seeker networking event, please send it to me at Tyrone at BunnySlippersRevo.com. And I'll see if I can mention it on the show. When you, don't, when you do land, please don't forget us. Please visit our Cafe Press store and buy a t-shirt, a water bottle, a coffee mug, a clock, or a sweatshirt. It will help support the show, and it will give you something to remember this time in transition. I don't want you to forget this time, because the moment you do, you set yourself up to be back. Now, we talked about swagger. This is swagger. For those watching the video version, this is swagger. This, however. It's Swagger on Beast Mode. Everybody, have a very good day. Take care and bye-bye.